بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما الحمد لله we continue going over the tremendous advice from the Fadil al-Sheikh al-Allama Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan Hafizahullah ta'ala We had reached the portion where the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala was going over those things that come in the narration which inform us that the individuals who partake in these things then they will have upon them the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are things that generally are specific and traditionally they were specific to the women. Although there are some things that also may be applicable to men and likewise for them will be the same punishment and they also will have upon them the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, when we examine those things in which were mentioned, we find that traditionally they are that which are associated with women and from the things that women do. So it is incumbent when looking at those issues that will safeguard the woman and those things that will protect them, that attention is given to the likes of these things so that the sisters, they know what to stay away from. And likewise, it is incumbent that the men also learn about these things so that they're able to better direct their families and the women folk inside of their families as relates to what to do and what not to do, what to stay away from. What we had taken thus far was pertaining to the issue of those women who pluck their eyebrows. and those women who have their eyebrows plucked. So those women who pluck eyebrows, whether that is by shaving them off completely, trimming them, shaping them, so on and so forth, be it with a razor or scissors or any other means by way in which hair is removed. Now, then this will enter into those who the curse of Allah is upon them. Likewise, we covered the issue of tattooing. How getting tattoos and things of this nature, then it enters into those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed them. The curse of Allah is upon the likes of these individuals. And these groups they have also been cursed upon the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 
as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cursed the likes of these individuals. So the next we come to from these list of individuals whom we want nothing to do with, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to safeguard and protect us from the likes of these ones. Is al wasila the wasila and from these things that I mentioned, just as a reminder to show us the time frame that we are living in, that we are living in a time frame where where ayyadu billah sin and transgression and despicable acts have become widespread. So much widespread that for those who are not guided, it seems to be normal. That it seems to be normal. This is how widespread it is. So from these things and from these individuals who are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are cursed upon the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it is al-wasila. Al-wasila hi al-lati, Shaykh Fuzan, he says, al-wasila hi al-lati tafsilu sha'raha bi sha'r al-akha. She is the one who she extends to her hair, or she adds to her hair, other hair. She adds to her hair, other hair. Them. And the ulama, they mention that the adding of the stenches to the hair, then what enters into that is whether the hair is natural hair, meaning that yani, it came from the head of a person, or whether it is synthetic, right? Whether it is synthetic. All of this enters into it. It's synthetic and it looks like hair. Them. Then all of this enters into adding to the hair. So, extensions, weaves, all of these things into, into the adding to the hair. Naam. The Shaykh, he says, لِأَنَّ هَذَا تَغْيِيرُ He says, because this is the alteration. It's changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is that which what? The shaytan. He stated that he would do to the children of Adam. That he would what? He would deceive them to the point where they change the creation of Allah. Azza wa Jal. So doing this, adding these type of extensions, right? And also what enters into that as well is Baruka. Also wigs enter into this as well. Naam. Naam. A wig. Is a changing of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ghish. And it is deception. It is deception. Naam. It is deception. Ghish. Bi an ta'ti bi baruka. Aw ta'ti bi sha'rin. Wa tasilahu bi sha'riha. Hatta yadunnu dhan. Anna hadha huwa sha'rwa. That she comes with a wig. Or she brings extensions to her hair. Naam. She brings extensions to her hair whether it's clipped on or sewn in, right? Uh, to the point where the one who looks up, or yani, to the point where the one who sees it, they will get the impression that this is actually her hair. Her hair may only be however long it is. They add extensions to the hair, a weave to the hair, and so on and so forth, right? And then a person thinks the hair is longer than what it really is. And also, it has to be mentioned that the extensions to the eyelashes, extensions to the eyelashes, ma'am, and all of this is enters into this. This is deception. This is deception. A person may have little eyelashes. Maybe they're not thick or whatever. I don't know what people are looking for when they do the likes of this nonsense. Right? The sisters, you know better what is any you know, the intended uh, purpose and 
uh, result or adding what they're trying to accomplish. But uh, in any event, whatever the case may be, the eyelash may be little, may be short, may be, uh, I don't know, not, not full or whatever. Now, nah, so they bring these fake eyelashes. So, and, and uh, to bring about what? A false impression. So a person may look and think that this is the eyelash. But it's not. This is wish. This is wish. This is deception. Man. And deception within by itself is something that has to be avoided and is something that is despicable. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in an authentic hadith, man, man ghashana fa laysa minna. أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من قشنا ليس منا أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that the one who deceives us that he is not from us or the one who deceives us he is not from us نعم so this غش this deception right this is one of the things that is accomplished by hair extensions or hair weaves or wigs and so on and so forth and these are those who the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upon them. The Shaykh al says that they will add to their hair to such that the one would think that this is from her hair. Well, who is Sha'ar al Ajnabi? But it is hair that's not hers. It's hair that's not hers. It's not her hair. This is not from her creation. Naam. And how often do we see this? You have individuals who their hair may be of a certain texture. Okay, the hair may be of a certain texture, whatever that texture may be, curly, straight, whatever. But then they bring a wig that's the exact opposite of their hair texture. This is not how she was created. The woman that had the straight hair, ma'am, she wants to uh, make it seem like she has a body inside of her hair and so on and so forth. So she brings a wig that is full to give the impression that she has this type of hair, this type of thick, full hair. A hair with a lot of body. But it's not her hair. It's a wig. It's not how she was created. She created with what? With, with, with thin hair. Now, and in the opposite. The woman may have curly hair. Now, may have curly hair. And then she, she brings, Yanni, uh, some extensions or a weave and that. And now she has straight Indian looking hair. But she's not from India. You understand? She has not been created with that texture of hair. Hold on, Mr. You see? You see how the shampani plays with the people? The person who has thick hair, curly hair, they want straight hair. The person that has straight hair, they say, oh, my hair is boring, I can't do nothing with it, so now they, they put on a wig because they want yeah, they, this puffy looking hair look and stuff like this. You see how the shampani play with the people? They're always thinking the grass is green on the other side just to get there and realize, you know what, this is grass, grass is grass. You understand? But in the process, what the shaytani has fooled you, duped you, tricked you into changing the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will earn you what? The curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A'udhu billah. This is not how she was created. So everyone should be happy and pleased with the manner in which they were created. Because it fits them, it suits them. This is suitable. And within that there is beauty. Now, within that there is beauty, and it's important for the sisters to know and to understand that. That within that there is beauty. So they have to appreciate the beauty in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with. And if they're individuals who do not appreciate that, then they're not worth her time anyway. So don't worry about them. You understand? It's important for the Muslim women to have a good self-esteem. To have a good self-esteem, this does not mean to be arrogant, narcissistic, this does not mean to be any, to the end of that, no, conceited and all that, no, we're not saying that. But it's important for the Muslim woman and the Muslim men to be able to see the beauty in that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and to learn to appreciate it and to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings of which he has given. Naam. Don't try to change yourself in order to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no good in that. There is no good in that. It will earn you the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what? And you look ridiculous at the same time. And you look ridiculous. The shaykh says, هَذِهِ وَاصِلَ مَلْعُونَ These hair extensions, then they are cursed. لَعَنَ النَّبِي 
al-wasila wal mustawsila the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he cursed the woman who has hair extensions and the or who does the hair extensions and the woman who asks that it be done those women who have the hair extensions and the women who put in hair extensions for others so even though the hair extension and the one who put in the hair extensions and the weaves and so on and so forth she may be you know natural look or whatever how they say but then she's putting in hair extensions into other people she's putting in weaves into other people and so on and so forth so she also is cursed which is a reminder for those sisters who are beauticians who do hair and the likes of this. It is not permissible for you to do weaves, to do hair extensions, and so on and so forth. Now, it's not permissible for you to do it. It's not. It's not permissible. And you will also get the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you do it to others, or even though you don't have it done to yourself, or you don't do it to yourself. Now, but وَكَذَلِكَ الْوَشْرِ Also, الْوَشْرِ نعم والوشر هو البر الأسنان وتفلج This is to put spaces inside of the teeth right because in certain cultures to have a gap in the teeth especially like the two front teeth right the two top front teeth right to have a gap in the teeth is beauty in that culture to have a gap in that teeth is, 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 is beauty in that culture. You understand? And beauty is relative. You know, what's beautiful to some people is not beautiful to other people and so on and so forth. Now, but in any event, in some cultures, to have gaps in the teeth, this is seen as beauty. It's beautiful. So those women who don't have gaps in their teeth, what they do, they, they, they put gaps inside the teeth. But this also what? It is cursed. Now, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, المتفلجات, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he cursed the women who put gaps inside of their teeth للحسن, so as beautification purposes they put gaps in their teeth for beautification purposes and these are the ones who they take to their teeth فيبردناها, and they يعني, file it down they, they, they file their teeth down yani, bil, uh, with a file. They actually file the teeth to create this gap inside of the teeth. And they put something in it from yani, uh, you know, to, to, to make a gap or a gap inside of the teeth. To make a gap between the two teeth. To dhunnu anna hadha min al jiman. They think this is from beautification. Ma'am. And if it's beautiful for the one who's born like that, alhamdulillah, this is good. You understand? But to artificially do this, this is not beautification, but rather huwa ta'at shaytan. But rather this is obedience to the shaytan. Even al-washar haram. Filing the teeth, doing some kind of altercation to the teeth, to put these gaps inside of it and so on and so forth, this is haram. Haram. Amma islah al asnan. However, to correct the teeth. Okay, so I don't want, and the Sheikh is making it clear so that no one understands that doing any type of thing to the teeth is haram. No. Filing the teeth down for beautificational purposes and so on and so forth, then yes. Messing around with the teeth purely for beautificational purposes, yes. But if there is to some type of correction that needs to be done to the teeth, then this is fine. So the Shaykh says, وَأَمَّا إِصْلَاحِ الْأَسْنَانِ إِذَا كَانَ فِيهَا خَلَلْ يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى إِصْلَاحِ فَلَا بَأْتْ فِي ذَلِكَ But if there is a correction, making a dental correction to the teeth, because there is you know, some type of deficiency that necessitates that, then there is no problem with that. Because this is actually from treatment. This is from treatment. Or to remove a defect. To remove a defect. So that's no problem. And 
تحدث فيها شيئا من الوشر أو فلج أو غير ذلك. But for the woman, if she has to do some type of correction to her teeth because there is an issue or there is a sickness now that requires some type of dental work and so on and so forth, no problem. There's no problem with that. The Sheikh says, but however, to do something to teeth that there's nothing wrong with them from putting these gaps inside of the teeth and other than that, then this is not permissible. This is not permissible. Now, also, the Sheikh mentions, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ said, and also, the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ he also cursed women. And these things that are mentioned, they are not from the standpoint of beautification. They are not from the standpoint of beautification. But it has to be mentioned and it's very important. It has to be mentioned and it's very important. Because the shaitan, if he can't get you from this way, then he'll try to get you from another way. Now, so it's important that we know all the roads in which the shaitan, he may attack us, so we can be on our guards. So when it comes to the standpoint of beautification, if he can't get a woman to be cursed in her pursuit of beautification, then he'll try to get her cursed uh, by way of her emotions. By way of her emotions. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, كَذَلِكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَعِنَا النَّائِحَ وَالْمُسْتَمِعَ that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he cursed he cursed the women who wail over the dead he cursed the women who wail and they raise their voice in crying over the dead or due to a calamity now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he cursed the women who shout out and who cry hysterically what over a calamity or a death of a person. So it gets into you and a death of a person, that, you know, accident, whatever the case may be. You have certain individuals who, this, you find them like this, yani, where you have a billah, they're over dramatic, they take things, yani, subhanAllah. You understand? And this is, this is not, this is not befitting. This is not good. And we'll come to see more and understand more better why the likes of these things are not befitting. And why they earned the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why they were cursed upon the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala kulli hal from them is what? Is this woman who they are yani, shouting out uh, and uh, 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 wailing uh, yani, in, uh, in, in, in these loud cries and so on and so forth. Ma'am. And those who listen to it. And those women who sit around and listen to it. They're both curse upon the tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَالنَّائِحَ أَلَّتِي تَرْفَعَ صَوْتَهَا عِنْدَ الْمُصِيبَةِ The one, this one who is a shouter, a crier, a wailer, is the one who they raise their voice very loud when a calamity strikes. Those who raise their voice very loud when a calamity strikes. But it's not just restricted to just the raising of the voice. No. It's not restricted it is the raising of the voice yani, in the musibah, when, a, when a calamity strikes. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَلَعِنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ الصَّالِقَةِ وَالْحَارِقَةِ وَالشَّاقَةِ But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also, what? He cursed the women who, naam, they wail out loud. They cry loud hysterically and, and overboard. And, the one who shaves their head in mourning. The women, something happens in mourning, now she cut off all her hair. This is not from the ways that we mourn. This is not from the legislative ways of mourning or dealing with a calamity. Now, and likewise, those who rip their clothes. Something bad happens and they start ripping and tearing at their clothes. Now, this is not permissible. This is not the way that the believer, male or female, deals with calamity. This is not the way that the believer, male or female, deals with the calamity. The one and he alati tarfa sautaha inda al musiba. The the wailer, the crier, the hysterical crier, is the one who they shout out loud. Yani when a calamity strikes. Eh? Eh, eh, and uh, iha. Nah, I'm saying. 
uh, and this action of doing this, it is a major sin min kabair It's a major sin from the major sins. It's a major sin from the major sins. Qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, so listen, so you know how serious this is. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Anna'iha, idha lam tatub qabla mawtiha, tuba'ath yawm al-qiyama wa alayha sirbaan min qitran. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his hadith is collected by a Muslim from the hadith of Abu Malik al-Ash'ari. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that the female wailer, the female wailer, hysterical crier, if she does not repent before she dies, she will be resurrected on the day of judgment wearing a shirt of tar and a dress of scabies. A shirt of tar and a dress of scabies. That will be hers to be clad in Yomul Qiyama. Why? Because she was one who was hysterical wailer, crying hysterically overboard. You understand? Wa'iyadu billah. This was from the way of Jahiliyyah. This is what the women in Jahiliyyah they used to do. Naam. The Shaykh he says, وَكَانُوا فِي الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَسْتَأْجِرُونَ النَّائِحَاتِ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ الْمَيِّتِ That the, in Jahiliyyah, this is, yani, you know, from the, prince, from the practices of Jahiliyyah and the rituals and customs of Jahiliyyah, is that they thought it was some kind of superiority in having people wail out and cry hysterically over the death of someone. As if this was to show some, you know, how special this individual was or something like this to the point where if they didn't have enough people who would, uh, yeah, hysterically cry like that and be all overboard and dramatic and so on and so forth, then they will hire people to come and do it. They will, they used to hire people to come and just to hysterically cry and wail, you know, actresses. They will come just to wail and cry and, you know, be all hysterical and all this like that, they were hiring them out. This is what they used to do in Jahiliyyah. The Shaykh says, فَهَذَا حَرَامٌ He said, this is haram. This is haram. But listen, the Shaykh says, وَلَكِنْ الْبُكَاءَ عَلَى الْمَيِّتِ لَا بَأْسْ بِهِ He said, but to cry over someone who has died, there's no problem with that. There's no problem that a person, their eyes fill with tears and they cry over the loss of a loved one. Over the loss of a friend or family member, yeah, there's no problem for them to cry. They hear about the death of one of the mashayikh, from the mashayikh Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, one of the yani, ulama, and then they cry, they, they get sad and they cry. No problem, there's no problem with that. There's no problem with that. So I don't want anyone to understand that the prohibition of the woman to wail out and hysterically cry and all that, then this means that we, we can't cry when we're sad. A person can cry when they're sad and there's no problem with that. There's no problem with that. Now, the Shaykh, he says, That's the crying, it takes place, but this is without what? This is without raising the voice and in a hysterical manner. And I think yani, it's clear and known the difference between the two. A person who's crying out of grief, and then the person who's going overboard, wailing and yelling, and 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 and, and to the end of it, yani, there's a there's a big difference. There's a big difference. But as far as the natural crying and the and the and the regular manner of crying and so on and so forth, now this is perfectly fine. This is perfectly fine. When Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam back the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he used to cry. He used to cry. Now the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to cry when 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 loved ones will die and he was sad he used to cry alayhi salatu wassalam. Now in fact the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said هذه رحمة جعلها الله في قلوب عباده. He said that this is the mercy. This is from the mercy that Allah has put inside of the hearts of His slaves. Meaning what? That crying. That crying. This is yani, one of the 
um, uh, results from what? From the mercy that Allah has put inside the hearts of his slaves. That a person, he cries when he's sad. No problem. Someone dies, he cry. No problem. But don't go overboard. The Shaykh, he says, وَأَمَّلْ الْجَزِعْ وَتَسَخْطُ وَالنَّدْبِ وَالنِّيَاحَ Well, that's something different. He said, but as far as a person, they become, yani, uh, they become in grief. They have grief, yani, extreme grief. A person have an extreme grief or they become extremely angry. They become angry, man. Or they start lamenting. You understand? Or they start yelling out and crying and wailing and so on and so forth. فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ يَضُرُّ مَيِّتْ فِي قَبْرِ So anyone who has concern of the person who has died, they understand that when a person starts acting hysterical, right? When they start, as they say, what? Crying uncontrollably. You understand? Acting hysterical, yelling out, breaking stuff because now they're getting mad, breaking stuff and you know, going crazy, tearing clothes and all this type of stuff, lamenting and all that, right? And, and, and yelling out. This actually will hurt the dead person. This actually, it will hurt the dead person. The qabri, the side of his grave. Now, I'm the side of his grave. And this is why it's important that we teach and we educate our families with the likes of this and we, and we remind them and we warn them for the likes of this. Now listen, when we die, when I die, don't go overboard. Don't act all crazy. Be patient. Look for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be acting crazy. If a person, or ulama, they mention that if a person, if he teaches and educates his family upon this and so on and so forth, then they won't be harmed if the family acts ignorantly uh, after their passing. However, that individual who like encourages this, he doesn't stop this type of behavior and almost, you know, encourages the likes of this, you know what I mean? And, and, and that and raise his family part, then they're going to be they're going to be punished. They're going to be punished over what these individuals they do. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith that is collected by Imam al Bukhari, and it's from the hadith al Mughira, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Anna al Mayyit yu'adhabu fi qabrihi bima biha alay." That the that 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 the one who is dead. He will be punished inside of his grave because of the people yelling about him and, and wailing and so on and so forth uh, uh, over, over his uh, death. وَالْحَارِقَ And the woman who cuts her hair. هِيَ الَّتِي تَحْلَقُ شَعْرِهَا عِنْدَ الْمُصِيبَةِ This is the one who cut her hair when something bad happens. There's a calamity, she shaved her hair off. She, she shaved her hair, her hair off. Now, there's a calamity, she shaves off her hair. وَالشَّاقَّةِ The terror هِيَ الَّتِي تَشَقُّ يعني جيبها, تَشَقُّ جَيْبَهَا أَوْ تَشَقُّ ثَوْبَهَا عِنْدَ الْمُصِيبَةِ She is the one who she starts ripping off her pockets, right? Or she starts tearing on, on her clothes, ripping her clothes or ripping her abaya, all that type of stuff, when a calamity strikes. They start ripping, go crazy. لِأَنَّ هَذِهِ كُلُّهَا And I want everyone to understand لِأَنَّ هَذِهِ because these things, and he could have all of them, Mubahir, Al Jazir, or Sakhto, it is to show grief, anxiety, and uh, uh, angriness, to be angry and grief, and he's stricken by what? Bi Qadailah, by the decree of Allah, wa Qadri, wa Adam Sabr. When a person does this, this is to show that what? That they are. They're not pleased with Allah's decree. They are not pleased with Allah, with Allah's decree. Now, and it is important that we, we are those who are pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we are being put here in this life as a test, yani. There are going to be many things that are going to test us inside of, uh, this life. You understand? And, 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 and it's important for us to know and to remember that one, there's no one who is alive except that they're going to die. There's no one who is alive, there's no human being walking around the earth right now except that they're going to die. In the Kamegits or in the Humegitun. You're going to die and they're going to die. You understand? Yeah, yeah, everyone's going to die. So with this being the case, we know this is the, this is the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At some point, everyone, we all going to die. You understand? So, what is the point 
of yelling and wailing and, and, and being more hysterical, ripping the clothes, shaving your hair. For what? For what? That is the yani you know, becoming enraged by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, this is this is horrible. Where's the Iman? And to believe in the qadr, to believe in the qadr, the good and bad of it. Damn. Where's the iman bil qadr? Bil qadai wal qadr. Where's the iman in the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Knowing and realizing all of this is a test. All of this is a test. Not that just all of this is a test, but what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us has promised us that he will test us with the likes of these things. So when a person becomes enraged, they become yani, just, you know, in, in extreme depression and so on and so forth, then this is showing a displeasure with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they are not patient because a person who's patient does not react like this. Rather, what is maqlub, the shaykh mentions, wal maqlub indal musa'ib as-sabr wal ihtisab but that which is required when there is a calamity, right, of any sorts, is what? Is to be patient and to anticipate the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because for the believer, all of his affair is good. His affair is all good. And that's only for a believer. His affair is good. As the Prophet said, let me told us in the, in, in the famous hadith. Huh? That it's amazing the affair of the believer. In asabatu darra sabr fakana khairun la. If he is tested with a calamity, with a hard time, and so on and so forth, a calamity, he's patient, and that's better for him. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said another hadith that's very, very, very well known. Aizm al jaza ma aizm al bala. That the greater the test, the greater the reward. When a believer goes through a test, the greater the test, the greater the reward. Damn. A person goes through some kind of pain, calamity, pain, something like that. Whatever any you know, pain strikes them or whatever, then sins get fall off the believer. The sin it falls off of the believer because of the pain that he has. Whether that pain is in his belly, whether that pain is from you know, in his arm and his leg and his head, whether it's from the prick of a thorn, sins get removed from him because of the pain he's suffering. Now the person he has heart pain, meaning that you know some some, some something happens to uh, someone they love and they and they feel distressed and they that that pain that they feel inside their heart, then they get rewarded, yeah, you know, for being patient and sins come off of them because of that, because of their grief. You understand the natural grief, of course, a person goes too far to something else, but the natural grief, as long as they're patient and anticipate the reward, they'll be rewarded tremendously by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. But listen, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and this can be found in Surah. And Baqarah, in his verse 155, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَالنَّقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah ta'ala, he says, and verily, no doubt, undoubtedly, you know, when you see this construction like this, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ That word, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ now, that construction, they want to get to it, you know, the grammatic of it, because we want to you know, finish up here. But in any event, that word there, this is like an emphasis. Verily, most definitely, undoubtedly, right? Verily, most definitely, undoubtedly, we are going to test you. Allah promises, you're going to be tested. I'm going to be tested. We are all going to be tested. With what? Bishay and min al with something from fear. With something from fear. Yeah. Waljur and hunger. And hunger. We're going to be tested with fear. We're going to be tested with hunger. And we're going to be tested with the loss of money, the loss of property, yeah. the loss of wealth, and the loss of life. And the loss of life, that those that we love will die. That they're going to be people that we love that's going to die before we die. Now, and the loss of prophets also will be, uh, any prophets like any from, uh, like, uh, 
not a prophet like a Nabi that's sent, but a prophet like you get profit from a, a business, right? Earnings, the fruit of one's labor will be lost. Will be lost. Allah Ta'ala promised that He's going to test us with all of this. And then Allah Ta'ala says, Well, best of Sabirin, but give glad tidings to those who are patient. Who are those who are patient? Allah Ta'ala describes them. Are those who are patient the one who they shout and they ripping their stuff off, they cutting off their hair and all this type of stuff, self mutilation and all these things like that? No. These are not them. The ones who are patient, Allah Ta'ala says, Alladina Ida Aswabatum Musibatum Kalu Inna Lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Those who when a calamity strikes them, they say Verily we belong unto Allah and unto Allah is our return. Verily we belong to Allah and unto Allah is our return. These are those who are patient. These are those who will check themselves and police themselves because they know, one, we belong to Allah. Since that we are Allah's property, Allah does with us what he wants. Amen. Allah does with us what he wants. We will be questioned. Allah will not be questioned. You understand? But yeah. Also, unto Allah is our return. We're going to return back to Allah and we will be questioned. So therefore, a person, he understands that the, these things that happen, Allah Ta'ala has promised that it will happen to us in our lifetime. So we have to check ourselves and how we act in wake of them. Why? Because we are traveling back. We will go unto Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and we will be held accountable for how we dealt with these calamities. We will be held accountable for how we dealt with these calamities. Naam. But, and, 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 and know that if we are patient, if we are patient, then a great reward. Those who are patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمًا That these ones, they will have for them the salawat of their Lord. For them will be one, the salawat of their Lord, the salawat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for who? Is for, is for who? Is for those who are patient when a calamity it strikes them. The ulama they explain that you know, what is meant uh, you know, without going too much in depth in that the, the salawat you know, they will be blessed and they will have the blessings. The blessings you know, will be for them and they will be forgiven. They will be blessed. They will be yani, uh, mentioned to the angels and they will be forgiven. They will be forgiven, those who are patient. Warahma. And they are those who they will receive Allah's mercy. They are those who they will receive Allah's mercy. And these ones, verily, these are the ones who are truly guided. Verily, these are the ones who are truly guided. These rewards are for those who are patient when calamity strikes. Or for those who are patient when calamity strikes. And this is why the Shaykh he said that what an individual has to do and that which is required is that when a calamity strikes, then they meet that with patience and anticipating the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thus, and al mar'a alayha mas'uliyat wa tabi'at fi hadhi al-haya wa hiya mukallafa. So in conclusion, the woman, she has responsibilities, she has duties. She will be held responsible and asked in question about what she had done. She has things that are obligated upon her inside of this life. Well, Mahmura, and she has been commanded to do certain things. She has been commanded to do certain things. Well, and she has been prohibited from other things. Thaba, wa she will be rewarded if she does good, and she will be punished if she does evil. Aniha Masuliya Adima. She has upon her a great responsibility, a tremendous role. 
a tremendous role and a tremendous responsibility. And I implore you sisters to know and to understand how important you are, how crucial you are, and how vital your rectification is, and how destructive your corruption will be upon yourselves and upon society. The Shaykh says, وَمَا هَلَكَتْ مُجْتَمِعَاتْ فِي السَّابِقُ وَاللَّاحِقُ إِلَّا بِسَبَبِ النِّسَاءِ فِي الْغَالِبِ He said, in societies both of antiquity and of present, they were not destroyed in most cases except due to the corruption of the women. When the women are corrupt, this destroys societies. You understand? So when you say, the, you know, anybody who thinks the women are not crucial, anyone who thinks the women are not vital, anyone who thinks that the women's role is not extremely important, then you need to get your head checked. The Shaykh, he says, فَالْمَرْأَ وَسِيلَ Because the woman, you know, she can be a means, she can be a pathway in, 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 in a road. You know, خَطَرْ إِذَا لَمْ she can be a means to tremendous danger if she does not safeguard herself and protect herself. And if her society does not protect her. So it is a must that the women, they seek to protect themselves and also that the society as a whole look after the welfare of women to make sure that they are safeguarded protected to make sure that they are treated like the precious things that they are because they are extremely precious and it is upon a society to treat them as such precious protect them make sure that that which will benefit them reaches them and make sure that that which will harm them is averted from them now to make sure that they benefit and thrive and strive and to make sure that that things that will hurt them yani, uh, in any which way, shape, and form is averted from them to the best of our ability. This is of extreme importance for any society that wants success. That they have to have a concern for the welfare of the women of that society. So anybody who thinks that Islam is a deen that does not show respect to the women and does not value and honor the women, then that's a person who one does not know what they are talking about or is a shaitan who knows better but he's trying to image and spoil the image of al-Islam because he wants to chase people away from it. It's either one who is extremely ignorant, who doesn't know what comes out of their mouths or it is one who is a shaitan who is deliberately trying to taint the image of Islam because he wants to chase people away from it. Now the shaykh he says, He says, and yani, the speech about women it, 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 it's, it's long. It's long. You understand? That's how women are so important. We talk about them for a long, long time with things that are connected to them and things like that because they're so important. It's long. The Shaykh says, He said, but with this, this will be sufficient for right now as relates to this particular advice. Now, he says, uh, and, and then the, the, the Shaykh he concluded uh, this, this tremendous piece of advice by sending the salawat was salam upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon his family and upon uh, yeah, uh, his companions uh, and with that this concludes uh, this particular class series dealing with the advice to the Muslim women but as the Shaykh he mentioned, the issues concerning the Muslim women, they are extremely important. So Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to complete and to finish this book. But coming the next week, inshaAllah ta'ala, we shall continue. We shall continue by going into a new book. And that book is also authored by Shaykh Saleh and Fawzan, you see. You see how much emphasis the ulama they place upon the sisters. Now you find the mashayikh, you know, the ulama, the many books that have been written specifically addressing issues dealing with women, having concern for them to make sure that they are benefited and learn about their religion, drawing their attention to things that will harm them so they know to stay away from and so on and so forth. You know, they put much effort in education of the women and much concern on the welfare of the women. 
So inshallah ta'ala, next week we will begin with a, another book that has been written by Sheikh Saleh al Fozan, uh, of which is the attention, attention to some rules and regulations specific to believing women. Attention to some rules and regulations that are specific to Muslim women. So we will begin that bi'ithnillahi ta'ala next week at the same time. Uh, so until that, نكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا